Forge up against Cognitive Forge, and we are underway. Let's cover who's playing what, whether we're going for what team. The bottom side of the map, you've got Torch, recently acquired the previous fanboys. Funball Mayor is going to be on, on her here on the left side. He loves this character. He plays it all the time. They're going to group up and have some fun here and try to possibly invade. Shadow Nightmare is going to be playing Zeus in the mid lane. Emilito on support with Emir, starting with Boots 2, actually, with a little bit of HP and move speed. Maybe looking for that move speed to get in and initiate on. We've got Spoo on Kronos leading the back end here in High Rock on Bastard. They're going to find a Nezti on Chalk. The detonate just... He's just sending just smoke signals through the sky, I guess. Across the way, Cog Force, the red team. We're going to have a Nesty on Chuck. In the solo lane, we do have Cobra Kai playing Hunter with Apollo. Zinder in the jungle with Bakasuda. Restarian playing John Quay in the mid lane with that Warlock Sash start. A little bit more, it makes a little bit more sense on John Quay this time around. Iron Dazer on Guan Yu with the guard boot start as well. It seems like they're just, they're just they're liking the same starts. So it's a, a Bancroft's one Vampiric Shroud Zeus opening. High sustain. Uh, gonna be looking to sit in this lane for basically forever um, and, and farm up safely against Restarian, who, of course, following suit with all the rest of the mid lane players around the world, will be rushing Warlock Sash. <laughs> what do you think about that on Zhang Kui? Obviously, obviously, it makes a lot of sense for Zhang Kui. Probably more so even than Al Guang. Even though Al Guang likes to kind of just stall out a lane and farm it forever, Restarian Zhang Kui actually has the protection to make that extra health worth a lot more from the Demon Bag. So. I actually am going to go out on a limb and say I like this rush. You know, you, you think about how things have changed overall for Jung Kui. Now, he used to be able to heal himself with his ultimate. That is no longer the case. Of course, he doesn't heal himself up, but it does, when he activates his ultimate, double the protections he gains from his demon bag. I'm Dejo taking some shots shots here. Looks like Fumball wants the kill, doesn't get it, though. Good invasion. Looks like they weren't una uh, they were unable to get the blue buff. Surprisingly enough, we're going to have to see a solo Apollo and a Chalk Guan Yu lane from Cog Forge. They're just innovating everything they can possibly. They're just, they don't even like wheels. They're not going to reinvent a wheel. They're just going to have like a square and just run with that because that seems like a better option. They're just going to try and <laughs> break as much as they can here. Thunderstrike and harass Emily a little bit. Now, of course, Chuck Guan Yu does have decent push. And we've seen these kind of bruiser lanes time and time again. Uh, we know Game Hunter really liked uh, leveraging these earlier on. Uh, you know, those tier of mirror lanes or Hercules with Bacchus or something like that. They loved running these. The problem is, is you're safe at the start of the game, but it just your damage starts to fall off in the mid stages, and it's hard to be able to keep up with that. Now, keep in mind, Apollo is effective in the solo lane, and he's up against a Kronos, which won't be able to punish him for quite some time. So Apollo's going to get a lot of free farm and come out strong in the mid game as well. Yeah, Apollo's definitely going to be fine against the Kronos, and, and you know, I guess I'm not really convinced that Chalk does that much worse against Kronos to, to really, you know, necessitize, I guess, this this type of uh, lane over here. But, you know, I can see some of the thinking, right? Chalk, Chalk should do fairly well against Onher once Guan Yu starts roaming, and it also will allow them to both go kind of hybridized style of, of damage builds. I would certainly expect... Uh, it, no, it's gonna be it's gonna be still the minus boots coming out for Dazer. It looks like, and I I, I probably would have preferred to see cooldown reduction boots in this lane for that Guan Yu. Just really maximize the idea that you know neither of you really need that much farm. I am so confused right now, Bart. Why is that? Jung Kui went back to the base, mm -hmm. paid three hundred gold for six percent movement speed, mm -hmm. and came back to the lane. He also he got a sprint. Finish his sash. Sprint he also one. got a sprint. I so think 500 gold spent on movement speed instead of finishing that sash there, although Jung Kui is relatively safe with his protections, his heal from exorcism, Exposed Evil has a slow on it. Honestly, I would like to see him just finish off the sash and be able to uh, do it. Now, you know, keep no, in mind no, the rotation to the movement speed there. It's, it's kitties. Kitty cats. He doesn't want to deal. He doesn't want to get basically stuck in the position where he is forced to eat. Right, I can understand the, the sprint, but the boots. The boots? I think the boots are just like, well, I'm here. <laughs> I might as well get something, you know. I the, I agree. That's a little bit barefoot. awkward. But the the sprint the sprint is definitely to deal with kitties and and the the boots are you know, hey why not? Honestly, you know it does give him a little bit more ability to position in the lane. I mean, ever so slightly, six percent movement speed. Zeus, of course, does have the the Aegis shield, which does give him run speed. No longer makes him slow immune, but will add some run speed to him. So, eh, you know, it, going out on a limb a little bit to justify this one, but you know, I think that there is some justification for it. Left side, Stormcrawl comes out, doing some damage. Rain Dance slowing down. Protections are being roast. There's the debuff. Bastet comes in, but they're all very low here. And Dazer and ST not taking a whole lot of damage. Thunderstrike and a force back, Emily. So Fumball wants him. The kitties are out, but Chalk Awkward Guan Yu kitties. doesn't really care a whole lot by your rotations. And honestly, the way things are going here, I'm surprised to see them putting so much pressure here on this double bruiser lane, uh, especially with the heal that they have from Rain Dance and the heal they have from Conviction. There's the Thunderstrike uh, as well as the Torrent. Uh, 
teleport there, looking for opportunity to jump on top of Funball. Funball still at level five, now hitting level five, does have Desert Fury, but look out for uh -huh. the jungle lurker here. Bakasura comes in, shows himself, and turns around Zinder, and not feeling that one. Of course, he can just jump away or pot Desert Fury for the CC immunity. Maybe even going to the mid lane to pick off Shadow Nightmare here. Uh, Ristarian is here. There goes Exclusive, not going to land. Zinder jumps in here. Does he have the ultimate activation? There goes the activation wow. for Ristarian, but again, Zinder is still not committing. Yeah, so, you know, I heard you like awkward backs because Shadow Nightmare is going to go back and find Magic Shoes too, uh, over finishing his Bancroft's Talon. So, uh, all around the mid lane here, it's a, it's definitely a different way of, uh, of itemizing. Uh, you do have Amir Emilito uh, throwing out a, a stun, not really finding anything over here on the left side. Camps uh, going to hand that down, though. It looks like he was able to pick that up. Zeus Ultimate, but no stun available from Emil. So, uh, no way to really effectively follow this up. Wall is not available either, it looks like, so they're not going to be able to convert anything on a day's here. And we are four minutes and 30 seconds in, ladies and gentlemen. If you are just joining us, this is the round of eight. Uh, the gentleman of Torch going up against Cog Forge, and we are all squared five minutes in. Yeah, it's exactly right, and we have some uh, strange itemization being picked up here. Spoo actually going for Sprint uh, there as well, and honestly, uh, I like this pick because there are characters who have been switching over into Sprint for the solo lane instead of the teleport because the teleport had the duration increased uh, for the cooldown there, uh, uh, a very large increase, in fact, uh, and it kind of hurts the, the return value there for the solo laner, whereas you have 600 gold for Tier 3 Sprint, which has a one-minute cooldown, gives you six seconds of 40% increased movement speed. That gets you back to lane very, very quickly. Not as quickly as teleport, but certainly has that option there. Uh, tier 2 boots there for Shadow Nightmare. We've seen a lot of players kind of just pick up the boots and then sit on them because the Tier 2 is very cheap. Cheap, and the Tier 3, notably, is, a, is usually about double the amount uh, to be able to go from Tier 2 to Tier 3. Uh, so we're going to see Shadow Nightmare pick up those boots for movement speed. Back to the base, they're staring, finally able to finish off that Warlock Sash. Doesn't beat the 3-minute Warlock Sash we saw from a Brocklips last game, but 5 minutes and 30 seconds is still a very, very quick Warlock Sash to finish off. He's going to start stacking that one up for himself. Now, keep in mind, if you're going to get Warlock Sash, you want to get it early. 100 stacks is a lot of last hits to get, and anyone who picks up Warlock Sash needs to get it early to make sure that stacks up, because as anyone knows, the action starts at around 12 minutes when things start picking up, and you have to have whatever it is you're looking to, to stack up just relatively done by then, otherwise you're mm -hmm. kind of just holding your team back with the rotations there. Uh, Boots finished by Shadow Nightmare, so he just went for the 20, per, 20 magical power and 4% magical lifesteal, uh, yeah, as well as the, uh, the Vampiric Shroud, just keep himself alive as he, he pushes up those lane minions, and he's going to be pretty happy with that. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, it's the lifesteal adds something, I guess, to Zeus. You know, he does have to kind of tank those early waves a little bit more than, you know, Zhang Kui would. Um, ooh, that's a nice block out there by Emilito. It's going to force out the ultimate from Dazer, so no Guan Yu ultimate going to be available, uh, you know, kind of at that first use to find a, a kill, unfortunately, for the gentleman of Cog Forge. Now it's going to be the mid-camp taken down right in front of Zinder and Spakasura, unable to even eat one of those minions. Left side lane, Anesti trying to do what he can against Funball Mare, but on her, you know, fairly confident just backpedaling and auto-attacking against the Chalk and doing a nice job of dodging those axe throws as well. So, you know, it, it, it seems to really come down to now, I want to say it's a jungler game, right? I mean, that's where we're going to see the action coming out. 3,800 gold farm on Hyrox, Zinder and sitting on... Uh, well, just a little bit ahead, about 100 gold ahead on his Shinnis Boots Bakasura. But he really needs an attack speed item to get going, I feel like. Yeah, I'm surprised to see the rotation there, and especially with the way the boots have been going uh, and the changes that have been implemented there. We usually see uh, Bakasura just rush that, that Fatalis for the early, even Hasten Fatalis. It gives you a little bit of movement speed and the ability just to glue to somebody and just kind of just railing into them with those Butcher Blades. Uh, that's kind of what they're trying to accomplish here. But instead of boots, uh, or instead of the, I guess, the Fatalis, we go for the boots this time around. Left side, Chalk and Guan Yu are inseparable here, kind of just staying in the lane the whole time, leaving Funball uh, to his own devices. Level 9 on Chalk, but level 6 on Guan Yu. Days are a little bit uh, behind here as Emir rotates back over. They have the wall. There's a Thunderstrike doing some damage. Funball is just getting harassed constantly. That Thunderstrike is so good at poking. It just throws it and throws it and throws it. So hard to be able to deal with that constant damage output. Frost Breath interrupt that. There goes the Thunderstrike. Do you have the Torrent follow-up? Looks like not going to happen there. They're going to back off. Look at the charts. We're going to see 271 gold in favor of Cog Forge right now, as well as 622 experience. So a slight lead going forward. They have been getting a little bit more of the mid-camp. Shell Nightmare in the mid-lane up against the Jung Kuei with the Warlock Sash, and not really a huge opportunity for him to be able to pick that up. Considering the fact that Demon Bag gives him a ton of protections, those get doubled when he ults, plus CC immunity, plus healing from exorcism, plus he has Warlock Sash, I don't see Jung Kuei dying anytime soon. 
Dazer in some trouble over here on the left side, taking a lot of damage. The detonation from Emil is enough as he tries to ride away on the horse, so Shards of Ice dealing a lot of damage there. Now it's going to be Zhang Kui. He's got a nice angle here on a Shadow Nightmare, channeling those ghosts into him, but I'm not sure if it's going to be enough. The extra protections from the Aegis Shield helping keep him alive. Misses the Chain Lightning, but will make it back to the base where he's going to drop his ultimate under tower to secure his life. It's Hyrock now running from Zindern, and it looks like the disengage is successful. We have free kill coming out. No retaliation, and Torch goes up one kill to nothing here. Um, you know, one thing that we didn't touch on during the drafting stage, we definitely should have, you know, kind of made more aware here to you, the viewers at home. A four physical team has been drafted here by Cog Forge. Uh, the Chalk Guan, Yu, Bakasar, and Apollo. So, you know, a little bit surprised not to see Mystical Marks coming out. You know, a little bit more here. You know, even on some of these gods you wouldn't normally see them synergize with, it'll just be such an effective item against them. Physical protection, gotta be the name of the game. Would not be surprised at all to see Hide in the Indian Lion in this game. Yeah, I know Mystical Markers do stack as well, so you have the ability to kind of stand on top of each other, get some damage output from that as well. 30 magical damage per tick, able to get some harassment off on that one. I'm surprised to see Ristarian not getting uh, one basic attack, honestly, more on Zeus or possibly two, just to make sure that kill does go down. He backs up a little bit early and not able to get the kill there on John Quay. And Pale comes out and Nesty taking some huge damage there from Funball. There's the beautiful Amir wall, a uh, Digimir wall coming up there on the left side. Uh, Going to try and block out Dazer, of course. It is still level one, he doesn't have that opportunity. Uh, we do see Heavenly Agility being picked up by John Quay. I actually like this pick a lot, considering it's going to help him a lot with repositioning. The heal increase is going to help him with that exorcism activation. Oh, Dazer, and of right course, lane. Moves me. Left line, side, sorry. Yeah, Wanya goes down there, and that's really—I mean, Funball with that Heartseeker as well as the OC build, able to shred through. And I think they just—they're not giving enough credit, especially with that Midas boost start. Yeah, I mean, they just the the you know the pub the pub game superstar you know lane here just executing. <laughs> Amir stun into uh, the pin, and uh, oh, and there's a nice pin coming out onto Zinder. And Funball gonna get some nice damage. They're gonna force out a leap as well as that Digi Wall comes up. Now it's gonna be a mid lane rotation here. This camp should be coming back up in the next five to six seconds. Emil going to uh, rotate into the mid here on that Amir, but really not find much in terms of damage on the Shangkwe. Funball perfectly happy to go back to his lane and hold it against Anesti, while Emil is going to be looking to clean up that blue buff. We haven't touched really at all Dry Bear on the right side here where Spoo is going up right. against Cobra Kai. It's Kronos versus Apollo. Uh, taking a look at the gold farm here, Spoo sitting at 5560, Cobra Kai sitting at 5770. So advantage Apollo here, as uh, as Kronos is still really working up towards uh, kind of that that early mid game timing. We'll have the moniker and maybe uh, moving into a fatalis potentially against Apollo. That wouldn't surprise me too much, or a, a magic damage item. Ultimate the activation, out. recall team is Zeus. Ultimate burst through Sprint gets activated. One kill goes down already. There's the storm call on top. Storm call does he have the thunder strike? Just one hit. Emily Till goes down. Best that jumps into one. You and just returns to death. They are trying to avoid her staring on John Quay and just hoping for the Hail Mary repounds, but not gonna get it. Fun ball, Bart. He's just standing here. He's looking for the opportunity. I don't see him getting it. He impales his own obelisk there as we're staring goes around the backside. I don't see this working out for him. There goes the hit. Cogforge gets it. And they don't even turn around. They're just gonna back off this one as uh, Kronos and Apollo still going at it. Yeah, perfectly happy to let him uh, throw in a Desert Fury, help him out a little bit there. No chance to steal. Hand of God securing that one. 2,000 gold, 2,800 experience going the way of Cogforge, looking at the graphs. Zindern making his way towards Fatalis, likely has enough in-hand gold. He does indeed to finish that bad boy up. Uh, around the team, Anesti sitting on 1,700 as well. 1,500 just spent on Dazer, 1,400 on Cobra Kai. So Sovereignty going to be a quick build here. Anesti going to have a bulwark finish any second now. Uh, he's just picked up a bulwark too, I'm sorry. Boots up and running on Cobra Kai, and he has that 1,500 gold to start building into either his next stacking item or go into something like the Aussie or an execution or some certainly some attack speed pen or more stacks are going to be coming the way of that Apollo shortly. I see a lot of people in chat just wondering what the Bastet Pounce was about there. Honestly, Bastet did not have vision of what was at the mid camps. And if she stayed where she was, John K would have actually finished her off there. So it was more of a Hail Mary, hope for the best, and just return the pounce and make sure that no one is back there. Possibility there. Uh, left side, Emily still getting harassed out by the Chalk and the Emir base test coming out here. But as you can see on the charts, 1900 gold in the league now is Cog Forge with that gold theory and that team fight victory. Uh, we see some harassment coming out. And we haven't really seen much from the Kronos or the Apollo. Honestly, Apollo could have ulted across the map there. Uh, he wasn't even needed. Storm call. Bakasur jumping into the ultimate. There goes the regurgitation on top. A good sub, but it's not going to save him. Desert Fury coming out. Zinder dropping low. Do they have it? They're looking for it on her. Just can't save his teammate. Bassett's here. 
There goes the Nine Tails. Razor Claws is available. He goes on top of Chalk. The Kitties, they're coming out. The slow. The Hand of the Gods comes out. The Cats are dropping call. The Thunder Strike comes out. He teleports to it, although a very slow and short distance teleport there if you're running towards it. But you know, nothing is the life. Teleport, they burn down a mirror. Yeah, you know, it's almost turned around there. That was almost a, a pretty grave misplay by, uh, by Cog Forge. Had, had you know, High Rock been there a little bit earlier, taking a little bit more of an aggressive angle, and they would have been able to get a return kill on what should have been a very, very easy sure. kill. Would have been a great play. Uh, you know, that, and that's kind of why, in general, you wouldn't target the support tank in that, uh, that gank there. I think they, you know, certainly would have preferred to get an on her, but the positioning was there for Emilito. So they take him out, and, uh, and that's going to be that. You know, let's also take a moment to talk about Shadow Nightmare's build here. He's left Bancroft Salad at rank 1, and he's going to leave that, it looks like. But, I mean, he may reach back for that a little bit later in the game, but for now, 540 gold in exchange for 20 magical power and 4% magical life seal is enough for that Zeus. You know, again, i got to bring it back to uh, an early point you made, the fact that Cogforge is running four physical right now. I'm surprised to see uh, really no physical items being picked up here. Shadow Nightmare does have that uh, Focus Void Stone, which will help him against Jung Kuei and just add some penetration on the back end there. So we see no itemization swaps uh, from Torch just yet to uh, leverage that uh, heavy amount of physical damage output. Uh, good Frost right there from Emilito to kick out the ward. Of course, Guan Yu has a backup. All this on the ground to make sure that they can't follow suit, but there's a lot of wards on the map. Honestly, Cog Forge is just, just leading here with this vision, although we do see Torch covering the front side of the Gold Fury. Gold Fury 2 respawn in two minutes going forward. Choose a focus finish there for Rastarian on Jung Kuei, able to get a little more CDR and get some more of those exposed evil cards coming out and exorcism to heal himself back up. There's a late strike on the ground. Emily still wants that war but just cannot get it. Days are just not giving this one up right now. Right side, Cardinal and Paul still going at it. Now, keep in mind, Spoo is going to be very, very farmed. 7,300 gold, which is actually going to be um, uh, very uh, similar to the enemy gold. It's be a dive in the mid. Forge there. Oh. Mid lane dive. Not going to get it. Bad step back off there. And honestly, I don't see what they're diving for. He's so tanky. Yeah, it's going to be a really tough one. I mean, <laughs> the Warlock Sash plus all the protection that he brings to the table, his effective health is through the roof right now in Restarian. You know, in, in the soul lane, it's interesting we're not kind of calling this lane more. You know, you, you feel like there's a couple of paper thin, you know, very, very non resilient soul laners over here. You would expect to see more action, but it's been, you know, quite the contrary. Very, very static lane. The jungler's not even bothering. I guess they feel like, uh, you know, the ultimates on these two gods are back in mid lane. Shadow Nightmare going to try to use that ultimate. Kite around inside of it. Gets a big detonate on the Zinder. Hyrox's going to dot him down. Restarian, now the one in trouble. Ultimate being used. Dazer is there. Not sure Bass is going to have enough damage at this point. Kitty's not available to go and try to clean up the Zhang Kui. And so he walks out of there. Okay, Demon Bag doing a lot of work in that fight. Zeus is going to survive by the skin of his teeth. Paul's up in the air, looking for opportunity to land on top of Bassett, forcing away to the Abyss. No, the Impale comes out! Fun ball, saving his teammate, dashing forward. Frost gets interrupted. I don't know if that was animation or not. It may be still available, but beautiful play by Cobra Kai. And that's why if you're going to gank an Apollo, you have to split up. Because if he hits both of you with that knockup on the moves, plus the movement speed decrease on you, and the movement speed increase on him, he can easily get away from that one. That's going to be the first rotation. And look what happens when you leave Soul Island. This is what happens when you leave Soul <laughs> yeah. Island. Your tower just, just goes away. It just melts if you leave the island. It just goes away. You forfeit that tower. So Spoo's going to be sitting at 8,200 gold. That's going to be the second most farmed in the game right now. Considering the fact that Cog Forge was so far ahead, as soon as Apollo leaves to try and get a kill who he doesn't even get, all of a sudden torches back into this and, and all tied up. Yeah, and, and look at look at what's going on in the soul lane as well. One thing that we've kind of failed to to mention here is that both of these gods have elected to go sprint three over the teleporter towers. They yes. both have very very nice movement based mechanics. So with the sprint and you know the the speed up from Kronos and the dash from Cobra Kai's Apollo, they feel perfectly you know kind of happy with their ability to get back to lane. So a little bit of a shift from you know what was kind of the the standard set in stone meta around how to play the solo lane in terms of itemization has really really started to break up now. Um, Taking a look at Cog Forge here, you know, they are up by about a thousand gold. They have the 2500 experience, but it seems to be fairly lacking here. You know, we really need to see Zindern starting to affect this game in a more meaningful way. Has the core items up and running, a couple attack speed items. Chins will be finished relatively shortly, but with that Fatalis, I feel like he could be more involved than he has been to this point. And, you know, one thing that, that Bassett definitely can do is, is is harass that mid lane. And as you see, a Restarian nearly forced out. She can do it so safely, going back and forth over the wall. Let's take a look at this left side here. We do have a bit of an engagement going down. Dazer on the horse. They want to find Emily too, but I'm not sure if they have enough damage to bring out this Amir. He's going to have a wall and a freeze available. So, so close, though. Fun ball zoning out as Nesty. What a pin. Funball has been all over that. The Just the, the coordination 
with the team wasn't there this time, but man, his, uh, uh oh, it's gonna be Zeus ultimate. That's gonna be Benesti inside of it. Trying to get in a position now with Zinder to keep this team zoned out so they can't dive in, and it looks like it's gonna be good. Torch, potentially an opportunity to go into gold here, here is they've, they've got both of the Guardians fairly low. Big, big, big play there. Uh, you know, trying to go for Chalk, but Chalk is just, Chalk is life, man. Pops up the Rain Dance, walks away. He's, he's pretty safe in his activation. We saw Paul come out doing a lot of damage to Amir, but he's going to survive as well. So no kills going forward. And you're exactly right. I mean, we mentioned it earlier uh, with the shift from Teleport, uh, with, with that cooldown increased uh, on the Teleport. And of course, the cost reduced on the Sprint kind of made it a little bit more, uh, you know, uh, understandable when people start picking that up there in the soul lane. And we've seen that shift within the last week here. And we're going to rotate over on the left side. The tower is uh, getting damaged here by Funball. Good wall from the near to force back the wave. Frostbreath comes out, just hit one minion, surprisingly enough. That one's going to go down here. We do see a Obsidian Shard picked up by Jung Kuei here. I love this pickup. If you ever do go for uh, you know, a, a, an off build, and what I mean by off build is you know avoiding that that shoes into Voidstone build, you got to pick up some pen, and Obsidian Shard is wonderful for that. 70 magical power at tier 3, as well as being a very cheap item. Obsidian Shard overall is a very, very inexpensive item. It allows you a good amount of penetration. 33% plus some damage, plus the fact that it doesn't cost you a whole lot, is a wonderful pickup after the very mm -hmm. tanky start of Warlock Sash. And I like Rastarian's rotation here in the itemization. Overall, we're going to see about an 850 gold lead here for Cog Forge. About 2200 experience, not super big, but certainly something that they have to keep an eye on. Chinsai is completed there on Bakasura. And one thing I, I want to mention here, and possibly if this engagement doesn't uh, get going here on the left side, looks like they want to get something done, but are not going to be able to pick it up here, is the fact that yesterday, Bart, we saw a lot of the support tanks going for issues of focus, but this was after Watcher's Gift. This time in the EU, we're going to see people pick up Midas Boots, but that's without a starting item. Right, yeah. So it's no Watcher's Gift and the Midas Boots. You know, very different from what we've seen in, in, uh, around. Uh, the, wow, they actually have different icons on my screen here. Yeah, How about that. That's that's you know that's really working for it as they are. You know, the the physical versus magical version. Um, you know, it's very different from the cooldown reduction boost we saw yesterday in NA. And and I think you know so it's 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 that idea of we don't need Watcher's Gift because of the extra gold spooling. I can kind of get away with uh, this leaner style of, of just the, the Midas Boots. You know, their Sovereignty timings aren't that far off. They're both up and running now. So, you know, it's, it's all things sold. Oh, mid lane. Yeah, Zinder. That's a lot of damage. Baka, Sura. It's very hard for Zeus to deal with that now that he's no longer immune wow. to slows. Forced to pop his sprint, but it just didn't have enough. Um, so I want to talk quickly here about the, uh, while well, Apollo pushes this right lane, let's make sure we get attention to that, uh, the the uh, Obsidian Shard pickup. And I think one of the major reasons why this item is so underrated, underrated similar to Titan's Bane, uh-oh, Dazer, you're in a lot of trouble here. That Amir ultimate, barely going to miss him. Um, Titan's Bane and Obsidian Shard underrated. They do a lot against objectives and towers. Um, you know, a lot of times you look at that and you say, well, the enemy team doesn't have that much protection that it's really going to shred. However, it really does wonders against Gold Furies and Towers here. What a wall from Digimir. It's going to reset the Gold Fury aggro. Cog Forge forced to fall back after that reset. Emilito, what a player. Desert Fury coming out here. Does have a few beats attacks for Dazer. Sprint is activated. Good Serenade dashes away. Dazer gets blocked out. Good wall. Prevents oh, Apollo from actually going forward here. There goes the Thunderstrike. Frost Breath hits two. Resterian pops recall demons. There goes the Rain Dance. Torrent comes out. Fun Ball under pressure. Exposed evil will slow him down. He gets out of dodge. The Boxer is lurking. A wall prevents Emilito from going into the camp. That was his goal. But he's not going to be able to get in on that one. The kill goes down. Kronos looking for Zinder. Not going to find it. A bit of a slow rotation there. It's going to be actually a one for one support tank for support tank. But that does mean that the Gold Fury is available with no Tier 3 Hand of the Gods, with the Apollo rotations on her and Bassett are going to back off from that one. Now keep in mind that uh, on her did have Asi able to heal himself back up on those basic attacks. It does give a surprising amount of 15% life steal plus under 35% health. You have an increased 25% as well. So on her could have tanked that for quite some time, but with the Apollo spotting out, it's not going to be the case. Mid tower is about a sneeze away from going down here. Zeus looking to pick that one up here, but with the rotations, he may want to be careful. Yeah, it's it's he's already he's already tasted the uh, the the wonderful goo that Bakasura shoots out of his mouth when he ultimates and and I don't think he liked the taste. It did result, of course, in his death. And you know, Shadow Nightmare though has been really a par for the course in terms of Zeus's here, not really having as much of an impact as on the game as his first pick, first ban status would imply. I mean, it just once again, it's it's we as we suspect, these players have not had much practice with Zeus. 
even though he is sitting in legendary, <laughs> to uh, to really effectively play him in tournament games. He is banned out so often. He's going to land a nice chain lightning there, though. That's going to be the ultimate, but it's a little bit late. Didn't really, you know, kind of commit to that fully. And now Zender going to be able to get out of their AOK. -okay. They have no Zeus ultimate available. It should yield them the mid tower, though. So, all things told, is worth it. Now I would expect them to rotate to the left, take the gold fury, or even try to push through the tier one. And it looks like it is going to be the tier one that is in the sights for Torch Gaming. Can Cognitive Forge hold them off? Left side, we see Chalk being forced away from the arm here. Doesn't hear all that rotation coming out here. Emilita looking for the wall. Comes on down there. Frost Breath is available. Tower will go down there. Jumping on top. Apollo's up in the air. Look for the initiation. Will he dunk down and force him away? There goes the cavalry charge. Stun is not going to stop this Warhorse. Jump it down. Stun. Emily will pop in the ultimate. Is it going to come? Does a little bit of damage to Chalk there. Forces him away. Tower will solve coming out. Recall D mids. Regurgitate coming out. High Rock goes down in quite a short order here. Fun ball dispersing out. Good burst damage. Kronos hits with the Polynomicon, football still alive! Can he get away? The Obelisk is on the ground, he's gonna go down there. And it's with the, to the tanky lineup here from Cock Forge, they're not really in a whole lot of pressure. Chalk is stuck on the ground, the detonate is available, is it gonna be enough? Does he have enough? Pull on, there goes the detonate! And the lightning from above will get the Chalk, but he stayed far too long and gets picked off on the back end. A three for one exchange, and if you're exchanging three of your players for Chalk, Things are not going your way, and all of a sudden we do have a goal free start. Emilito does have tier three hand of the gods, so they're gonna back off. So it's a uh, another thing that we haven't mentioned yet in the realm of uh, you built what is uh, is Ankh rank two on a Nesti. Uh, we know this item is is generally fairly highly regarded in terms of its rank two prowess, similar to Pestilence. Both of them extremely cost efficient. Uh, Twenty five physical protections, two hundred fifty health. And, and then you have the, uh, you know, on the other side, Pestilence giving you similar stats. So it's actually going to leave it at that, is there's not a great physical threat coming off from Torch at this point in the game. Fun Ball, really the only one doing the damage, but, uh, you know, High Rock still just kind of waiting to be the impact on the game that the Bastet could and should be. And Nessie perfectly happy to just take that on break too. It's going to be Warlocks into Ethereal here for Restarian, so very, very tanky Junk Kuei with the pen from Obsidian Shard, a smart build from him. A uh, Rage Deathbringer, you know, kind of rush here from Cobra Kai with that Heart Seeker. It's going to be uh, full attack speed for Zindern. Wouldn't expect anything less. And, you know, really besides that, we're looking at fairly standard builds. Uh, as in the mid lane, Emil is going to get pressured a bit by Cognitive Forge. Yeah, I tried to defend this tower by himself, but honestly, what can you really do here? Shen and I are going to join up with that chain lightning. Look for options. He's going to get one bounce on each, uh, not even a detonate there, as, of course, the multiplier effect on that detonate makes it less useful uh, on the one charge and, and, you know, exponentially so on two and three. Boa Cole being picked up early on again. We're going to see uh, Breastfeed Devourer finish on Sh uh, Shadow Nightmare, picking up some physical protection as well as a Hide of the Urchin uh, start there for Emily to after the Sovereignty. Uh, Focus Void Blade is going to be... Uh, I'm, I don't understand this this uh, itemization choice in in literally every game I ever cast ever. <laughs> Art. If you're gonna get two void blades, why would you not get a standard one of them? With on a, one of them. Yeah. You're wasting that penetration. That penetration could benefit everyone else. Uh, you know, obviously it's just Bastet and Onher who have that physical penetration, and maybe they're thinking we're not going to be near each other in the fight. Everyone else is magical. In this situation, there's some kind of merit to it. But in general, I'm shocked to see how often we see two focus void blades, two focus void stones, just not leveraging that aura. It's the the eye is greater than we. That's you know, right. it's, it's it's just it's it's greed. It, I mean, what else could it be, right? I mean, what else could you really point out and say? And, and I think you know the players would probably justify it as, oh well, uh, you're absolutely right, right? High Rock should be in the back lines of their team. Well, Fun Barrel will be in the back line of our team. We do have a pause coming out here. Uh, Zinder going to go ahead and pause that game out. Likely some uh, some kind of connection issues here. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it's a good kind of motive to roll with here. Is is why would they both go focus void blade in this situation? Well, you know, one thing that comes to mind immediately is, is flat pen um, on those abilities. So it makes a lot of sense for High Rock, right? He has the dot that really benefits highly from flat pen. He doesn't have to kind of stay in range to make sure that that gets the pen. He has that kind of long range nine tails as well. Um, but Fun Ball, I just don't know. Like, you just wouldn't normally see a void blade on him. So he really wants that flat pen. But, you know, it to me, it's kind of debatable that. Why he wouldn't just go for Jotun's Wrath in this case? Like, sure. on her certainly does well with CDR. The pen is still good. Physical protection. It's because they're going up against that four physical team, as we noted. But I would have preferred to see an actual physical protection on them if you wanted to go for something like this over a hybrid one. I think you're they're leaving a lot of gold on the table and opportunity cost. 
Yeah, he's exactly right. I mean, the difference between Void Blade and Focus Void Blade, for those of you who don't know, 25 penetration is going to be what you get from the Focus Void Blade, and it's going to be a 15 per, uh, penetration aura for the standard one. So you lose about 10 penetration if you pick up the aura for yourself, uh, but if you have the aura application, then, you know, if Bastet picked up the, uh, the aura version, the standard version, then on her would have 40 penetration, and that right. kind of split there would help out a lot. So you, know, you lose out on 10 yourself, but you get 15 to your teammate. Maybe that helps out, maybe it doesn't. And again, like the situation with only two physicals on your team, and it's possible that Bastet and Onher are going to be nowhere near each other during the team fights as Bastet's going in and out. They may think that maybe that aura won't benefit. So that's something that we're going to focus on here. The pause should be coming out in just about 30 to 40 seconds here uh, as it does come back. It looks like the unpause is coming through here as the game is going to come back into live here. Torch vs. Cogforge is back underway, crossing over towards the 27-minute mark. Everything is moving forward. Look at the graphs. We're going to see a 932 gold lead for uh, Cogforge, as well as a 5,500 experience lead. If you're uh, wondering where we are at in the game right now, Chinsai has completed there on Chalk for the damage output. Uh, but Kasura, very, very damaging right now. We also have Deathbringer completed on the Apollo. He's going to start shredding through. And again, you know, like you said, we, we have four physical on Cogforge and really not that many physical protection items from Torch, although we do see Emilito going for hard physical on the Sovereignty and then half and half on that uh, Hide of the Urchin there, just trying to keep focus on physical overall. Zinder is now going to sell off that early uh, that early Bumbas and now go directly for that Executioner for tons of Shred and Attack Speed. Bakasur is going to start eating people alive with that ultimate activation regurgitate, able to just shred through those squishy targets. And uh, honestly, right now, Torch really needs to start focusing on getting the right targets picked off immediately because uh, the itemization just really isn't in their favor. It's, man, this is, I, I just feel like Torch is going to take a fight at some point in this game and realize that they have not built anywhere near enough physical protection. <laughs> it's just so much damage that's going to come out, and with, with Guan Yu throwing out that physical pen as well with Talo Assault, these cons are going to start hitting ridiculously hard, and it could all start right here with a nice storm call by a Nesty. He could very well go in here, and this is going to be the initiation. Rastarian's in there as well, channeling out those demons. Emolito going to get stunned out, not going to be able to peel for now. Spoo is going to rewind most of that damage. Hyrock now in deep, but he's going to be forced to eat this big-time Zeus ultimate. Days are trying to fall back. High Rock now trying to lead this fight as Bassett getting quite low himself. Spoo wanting to zone out a Nesty and, and all things told, a wonderful engagement there by Torch. Shadow Nightmare not going to fall either, so it's a one for two trade. Gold Fury still up though, and, and Cogforge, you know, looks like they're actually not going to go for it surprisingly enough. They're going to take out the mid lane here, uh, and that should be easy peasy. Chalk going to go ahead and rain dance right through that one and walk back with immunity. You know, I, I'm a little bit disappointed here in the, the Cogforge engagement. Now, if you look at the starting lineup here for Cogforge, you have Junkwei with a Warlock Sash start. You have Chalk, Guan Yu. So that's a, just a, a wonderful front line. That is like the dream uh, as far as damage absorption. Obviously, you could you go with more appeal and CC uh, involvement there, but generally very, very tanky. So I would like to see Zinder and Cobra Kai kind of just bobbing and weaving, you know, float like a butterfly here, and kind of just get in, get out. We saw Zinder in 100% commit to that last little engagement, and his team was, you know, notably very far behind, and as soon as he jumped in, Bastet on her chronos in the face. Polynomicon burst, Bakasura just disappears, and I'd like to see him kind of jump in and jump out. Who's going to go down if he leaves the fight? Cogforge very tanky. Cobra Kai caught out here. Damage up, comes through. Pops up the move. Stunned out there. There goes the first, and they have it. Razor Claw's not going to hit. Spoo rewinds, though. There goes the cavalry charge. Wait for the stun. Storm Call comes out. A silence no comes stun. out on that CC immunity. Purification beat. Sprint comes out. Going for Spoo trying to get away, but look at the durability of Cogforge. Frostbreath Zinder is the target. Are they going to They're going to get it there with the Nine Tails activation. The cats have not actually have been used at this point. There goes the mirror ultimate first. Now Bastet does go down. Dazer and Vistarian getting out of dodge, backing up three charges on top of Nesty. Chalk is durable, but how durable do you need to be when you're being railed like that? There goes John Quay trying to get a kill on the Zeus. Doesn't get it. He's so low. Rastarian forced to retreat. Throws out a taunting chain lightning. He does go down. Tell Assault comes out there by Quan Yu. Kronos gets soloed in the back end by Apollo, who was just respawning. Guan Yu will survive as well. A three for two in favor of Torch again. Cogforge not hitting home. Yeah, and, and okay, so here's the deal though, is that, is that Apollo is actually in that fight for about 30 seconds and he tries to dive Kronos as he's kiting around the fire giant, ends up having to chase him all the way to the tier 2 on the right side, spends about 90 seconds doing so where he could have easily helped his team secure more kills and made that an even trade. Instead, he goes deep for Spoo, who already is past his core items, is not going to slow down his damage output really at all. He only had a couple 
hundred gold in hand at that point. So it's just a misplay all through and through from Cobra Kai there. Sure, he secures a kill, but they could have easily gotten that kill on Zeus and likely found the Amir as well with a Mesmerize. Instead, goes deep for Kronos, and that is going to yield a, a pretty undesirable outcome for his team. And now, look at Torch. They've warded up like crazy. Their consumables are ready to go. They're going to try to contest this Fire Giant shortly. Yeah, they have finally pulled ahead in that gold chart. You see 928 gold in their favor here. Lots of wards being picked up. Uh, three of the purple wards. We do have six, seven of the standard wards coming out here <clears throat> from Torch. Excuse me. Uh, we have that lifesteal coming out from Cogforge as well. Starting with that Bloodforge there on Apollo Deathburner being started up by the Block of Zero. Fire Giant is available, as you mentioned, Bart. So something that's going to be a huge point of contention for both teams. And I think that Cogforge is really feeling that drain. I'm surprised to see so many players going into this very early, durable, tanky route uh, with a Warlock Sash, buying Paul Walker Hope. I mean, they have so much durability here, but you can see the effect it, it has on the team fights. I mean, there are specific roles for a reason, right? These archetypes are devised to help team fights. Mages are bursty. Hunters get in and get out. Their single target damage is really high. You have tanks that are good at zoning people out, getting the damage output across the board. Uh, you know, you have these specific roles that, that are built for this, and when all of a sudden you get a lot of tankiness on John Quay, who has, you know, Ethereal Staff, Warlock Sash, he has a ton of tankiness built into his character, and his damage output honestly needs to be a little bit higher. Checking in the numbers, we're going to see uh, Rastarian actually uh, leading the charts right now on his team for 23,000, but nowhere near the 28,000 on Zeus, and on her, honestly, dropping 20,000 himself. A good start. Frost Breath on Daedra, diving a tower here. A little bit of position is Cog forwards. The stun's not going to land, of course, the cavalry charge has CC immunity on top of him. I believe so tanking that tower here. Kind of diving in. Chalk gets impaled to the obelisk. There goes Recall Demons. They're starting up here. Cogforge wants this fight. Amir ultimately going to hit nobody as they zone that one out there. Apollo, he's in the air. He's looking for the duck. Look for the sky. It's going to come down. Apollo lands looking for Amir. Going to get Frost Breath immediately. There goes the sun. Book of Demons comes out. And Chalk goes down for Amir. One for one so far. Resteria gets crit by Funball. Absolutely destroyed. Cobra Kai sprinting away. Dazer by himself. Zindern is doing harpies just to get a little bit of life still before he goes back in, but just realizes it's all over. Three for one. Just and terrible. Again, a slow initiation and not enough damage. Just a terrible initiation. Just a terrible fight for them. And, and, and it, once again, you got to look at Cobra Kai and say, just a, such a misplay on that Apollo. He dives in, doesn't go deep enough, doesn't get anyone. Chuck gets bodied in the backside. They didn't actually get to Fun Ball. They went so deep with Chalk, and they should have had the Apollo follow-up to take out that backline, but they never made it there. So Chalk blows his ultimate, gets destroyed by two crits and a lockdown by Spoo, who now, of course, has turned the corner on Kronos, where he is a late-game nightmare, has Polynomicon, has Demonic Grip, has a crap ton of Shred. Between the Obsidian Shard and Demonic Grip, going to have a Rod of up and running shortly. And it's just not looking very good at all for the boys of Cognitive Forge. They just got to get these back lines down, and they can't get there. They have so much damage. I mean, it's Malice and Deathbringer finished for Cobra Kai, and he did effectively nothing in that team fight. Yeah, it was very, very limited, and it was really tough because they're zoning it out prop, and I think Torch realizes what they need to do here. They have a high, high propensity to jump on the Bakasura and the Apollo, and they realize that that's where the damage is coming from with a Tanky Guan Yu, a Bruiser, uh, you know, a Bruiser Chalk, and honestly, I would consider it a Bruiser uh, Jung Kuei as well with the Ethereal Staff. She was a focus in Warlock Sash here. His damage is not you know, as high as you'd expect it to be. In fact, looking at the numbers right now, we see Jung Kuei currently sitting at 310 magical power. Zeus is at uh, 355. And you see 420 on Kronos, who is attack based, uh, even with just those uh, attack based items here. So, definitely something that they have to look at right now. Now their mid uh, tower has gone down. The mid uh, tier 1 and tier 2 are gone at this point. It's going to be about a 4,000 lead. Double Frost Breath, 9 Tails, first. Damage. Dazer is going to go down here. First damage comes out. Look at the numbers across the screen. Restarian looking for the damage. Doesn't have it. Looking for the sprint. Not going to close up. Bakasur going for the fight. It's going to get Zeus on the back end, but trades two of his teammates to get that far back there. Anesti by himself goes down. Three for one yet again. This seems to be the, the story of today's game. Apollo's up in the air. What's he going to do? He's looking for something. Knocks Emilito into the wall instead of into the Phoenix. The sun, the burst. What Cobra Kai wall. goes down, throws his life away. Bakasura is left defending his base alone. The Fire Giant buff is up, and honestly, this could be the game. 
I would expect it to be so. I mean, as you mentioned, the in-hand damage from Spoo is getting so much out of all that magical power. 35% scaling on each hit, so he's just throwing him in there. Zinder, and yeah, bye-bye. You, you can't aggress into that. And and really, you know, where where this has just fallen apart for Cog Forge is that they've let Torch get so out of hand with their kind of late-game hyper carries that they no longer have any threat from Zhang Kui. Even though he's gone for this massive HP style of build, he still just gets completely melted by the crits. No physical protection coming out to deal with Fun Ball and uh, the damage from High Rock. It just gets torn through. And really, what can you do when you have on her that's gone that far into his late game build and a Kronos is that progressed? It's very, very hard to deal with. And they really needed Bakasura, Apollo, and Chalk to combine for better backline pressure. Weren't able to get it, and Fun Ball just goes wild. Yeah, again, this is the you know the main criticism I have for these tanky builds on characters that are, are meant to deal damage.